It's difficult to overstate just how much of a sheer anomaly Fatal Frame Maiden in Black Water is. I mean, let's consider the facts. It's the fifth game in a Japanese survival horror series where your only means of defense is a camera, whose first three games were primarily released for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, and whose fourth game was a Wii exclusive that was never released outside of Japan. This means that a wide swath of the Wii U's Western audience has likely never even heard of this series, let alone asked for it, which rightly led many fans to assume that Maiden in Black Water would never make it out of Japan. We may never know what compelled the usually risk-averse Nintendo of America to take a chance on this game, but Wii U owners should be glad they did, because even if it isn't perfect, there simply isn't anything else quite like it on the Wii U or any other current generation platform. Although Maiden of Black Water is technically the fifth game in the series and does feature a couple of returning characters from previous entries, the prior Fatal Frame games generally are not referenced and no knowledge of them is needed to enjoy this game's story to its fullest. There's no high barrier of entry for serious newcomers here, and this is fortunate because Maiden of Blackwater's tale is a compelling one that had me hooked almost from the get-go. Maiden of Blackwater takes place in and around Mount Hikami, known to locals as a suicide hotspot that attracts those seeking to end their lives in a dignified manner. The story follows three principal characters as they each get caught up in a string of disappearances and deaths involving those who have been mysteriously spirited away to the mountain. Naturally, each character has their own reasons for investigating Mount Hikami, despite the supernaturally horrific dangers there, and I found it impossible not to get caught up in each of their individual plights as I got to know them and their motivations better. The game's events are separated into bite-sized chapters that feel almost like episodes of a television series and keep things moving at a brisk pace. While the slightly dull prologue and unremarkable first chapter failed to grab me and initially had me concerned that the story would drag, the game takes off at a breakneck pace right after that and I found myself not wanting but needing to know what was going to happen next from the second chapter onward. The most important character in Maiden of Black Water may well be Mount Hikami itself. The sense that this is a sacred place steeped in a history of death and the occult is always palpable as you explore its many varied environments, including an ominous forest, an old shrine full of creepy Japanese dolls, a temple housing the remains of shrine maidens sacrificed to appease ancient gods, decrepit cable car stations, flooded graveyards, and more. As I progressed through the game, I wasn't just compelled to see what would happen to the human characters I had been following, I was hungry to uncover more of the lore and history behind Mount Hikami and learn why this place was beset by so many supernatural horrors. Speaking of those supernatural horrors, there are very real dangers out there in Mount Hikami in the form of malevolent tortured spirits looking to drag you into the netherworld with them, and your only means of defense is the Camera Obscura, a camera with the power to exercise ghosts and make the invisible visible. This is where the meat of Maiden of Blackwater's gameplay is found. Fatal Frame veterans already know this, but there's a lot more to handling the Camera Obscura effectively than just pointing and shooting. Your ghostly assailants are constantly on the move and are much more mobile than you are, able to warp and phase through walls at will, so battles are almost always tense affairs where a ghost could disappear and pop up right behind you any time, always keeping you on your toes. The key to fighting effectively is to stay on the move and adjust your position so that you're always fitting as many of a ghost's weak points in the frame as you can before taking a shot. In order to discourage you from just going in and shooting blindly, even basic ghosts often have an oppressively large amount of health that will only be reduced by mere slivers if you don't take the time to think about it and line up your shots properly. Further encouraging smart play is the fact that the game awards points for every shot you take, with the best shots naturally awarding the most points. These points are then used for upgrading the camera obscura's damage output, shutter speed, attack distance, and more. In this way, the game directly rewards mastery of its mechanics by allowing you to power up your camera more quickly. There are also other mechanics at play. Each successful shot absorbs spirit power from the ghost, which you can use to perform special attacks based on the camera lenses you have equipped. For instance, the Recover lens restores a portion of your health based on the shot's total damage, and the Stun lens can forcibly stagger a ghost that's about to grab you. These mechanics differ slightly depending on the character you're playing as, too. As it turns out, the Wii U gamepad has a distinct sense of tactile response to the camera obscure that simply wasn't possible in previous games. Maiden of Black Water uses the gamepad's gyroscope to imitate the act of turning a camera sideways in real life, allowing you to manually manipulate the camera obscure at any time to get the best possible shot. If you're fighting an especially tall ghost, for example, it's a good idea to turn the gamepad sideways and line your shot up vertically. This kind of physical immersion, combined with the gamepad's screen acting as the camera's viewfinder, adds a lot to the game and is a rare example of the gamepad enabling a unique gameplay mechanic that simply can't be replicated on a traditional controller. It's implemented remarkably well, and I never encountered any problems with the gyroscope's motion sensing. 
For those who would rather not use the gamepad screen as the camera's viewfinder, the game does include the option to display the camera's interface on the TV so that all the action takes place on the TV screen, making the gameplay more similar to previous games. Both options are perfectly viable depending on your preferences. Outside of battle, the gamepad screen functions as a handy, easy-to-read map that gets filled in as you explore. The camera obscura also plays a significant role outside of fighting ghosts. As you're exploring Mount Hikami, benign spirits will occasionally appear and provide glimpses of what they were doing before they died, and photographing them before they disappear will award you with extra points. You're also occasionally tasked with going on a scavenger hunt of sorts to take pictures of specific places shown in photos in order to unlock the way forward. These parts do threaten to slow down the game's pacing too much when all you want to do is move ahead, but thankfully these challenges never get too difficult and are only a minor annoyance as a result. Maiden of Black Water absolutely excels at building a relentlessly creepy, oppressive atmosphere throughout. There's a fair share of jump scares to be had here, no doubt, but this game is more about creating an indelible sense of dread that keeps you feeling uneasy and intimidated than it is jumping out at you with gotcha moments. Those looking for Resident Evil's brand of guns blazing, high action horror won't find it here. Fatal Frame is more like Silent Hill in that it maintains a slower, more deliberate pace meant to let the atmosphere get under your skin gradually. Slower really is the right word for it, too. Atmosphere building is one thing, and like I said before, the story is paced very well, but everything else in Maiden of Blackwater kind of feels like it's soaked in molasses, and this can often be to the game's detriment. All three playable characters walk, run, and turn with all the agility of a tank, and indeed, the controls are not unlike the tank-like controls in old Resident Evil games. More often than not, I found myself fighting the controls in an effort to get where I wanted to go without turning in a bunch of other directions first, which I found to be especially frustrating in tense battle situations where I was quickly being attacked by ghosts on all sides and taking unnecessary damage due to my character fumbling over their own sluggishness. This problem is even worse when you're fighting in hallways and other close quarters environments, with ghosts easily phasing in and out of walls while you slowly, clumsily try to turn your character around and run away to compensate. There is a quick turn command in the style of Resident Evil 4, but it honestly isn't much help. These control issues represent Maiden of Blackwater's most egregious, persistent flaw. Maiden of Blackwater has genuinely stellar sound design. This is a game you'll want to crank the volume way up for. While there's almost no music to speak of, the incredible ambience of Mount Hikami's various locations cranks the fear factor up to 11. The shriek of a ghost reliving its own death could pierce the darkness around you at any time, and this is a game that certainly proves silence can sometimes be the loudest sound of all. While the English voice acting falls flat due to stilted performances and wildly uneven volume levels, with many characters barely being audible over the rest of the game, it hardly matters when everything else sounds so authentic. In a nice bit of fan service, the game does feature dual language audio, so those of you put off by the poor English voice acting can switch to the native Japanese voice track if you like. Graphically, Maiden of Blackwater stands as a perfectly good looking game even if it isn't mind blowing. There are definitely some low res textures here and there, and character animation can occasionally be a bit stiff. But the game looks pretty great on the whole, with fantastic water and shadow effects being the standout visual elements. The various ghosts and apparitions also look particularly great, and it's hard not to jump as the ghost of a girl who slit her own throat lunges at you as you frantically try to take a good picture of her. Like in many survival horror games, much of the story is revealed via documents you find scattered around as you explore, and my main complaint about the visuals is related to this. Simply put, the text in these documents is way too faint and hard to read on both the TV and the Wii U gamepad screen. I often found myself needing to squint in order to read the text in these various documents, which is a bit irritating. It is worth mentioning that Maiden of Blackwater is a shockingly graphic game, with incredibly realistic depictions of people dying in various horrible ways and some genuinely disturbing ghost designs. However you feel about the Wii U squeaky clean, family-friendly image, this game completely shatters it and is one of the most visually disturbing games I've ever played on a Nintendo console, or any other console for that matter. Maiden of Blackwater is not for the squeamish or faint of heart. Overall, while incredibly clumsy, sluggish character movements and controls do their best to hinder the experience and often make battles with ghosts feel unfair, I like Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater and would recommend it in a second to survival horror fans of the Silent Hill persuasion and, of course, to existing Fatal Frame fans. With a compelling, haunting story and a genuinely terrifying atmosphere throughout, this is a game best played by yourself at night with the lights off. Or maybe it isn't, depending on how healthy your heart is. Thanks for watching and keep it on Gaming Explained for more on Fatal Frame and all things gaming.